Part 5. Why is relative risk important? 1. Relative risk is a common measure of association or causation between exposure and outcome variables. 2. Relative risk point estimates can be adjusted using multidimensional statistical modeling, such as logistic regression, a type of log linear modeling, thereby controlling for the effects or associations of other variables. 3. The ability to adjust relative risk point estimates for important covariates is the primary advantage of using relative risk, a times higher measure, that is a ratio, over a simple difference in proportions. But if you remember your high school mathematics, the logarithm of a ratio is the difference of the logarithms. So a ratio can be conceptualized as a difference on a logarithmic scale. Something to think about when you wonder why relative risk would be used over a simple difference in proportions. There is another reason, too. But that is the subject of the video, Unadjusted Relative Risk versus Difference Between Two Proportions. What story do you want to tell? Indeed, adjusting relative risk point estimates will be explored in a future video. Summary. Use relative risk only in prospective studies with indicator variables for the exposure and outcome variables. Relative risk can be used as a measure of causation if random assignment is applied to the exposure variable. Without random assignment, relative risk can be interpreted as a measure of association. Relative risk is a times higher measure and be con Sorry, let me do that again. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Relative risk is a times higher measure and can be converted into a percent increase via the formula percent increased risk equals relative risk minus one quantity times 100 percent. Relative risk can be adjusted for the effects or associations of important covariates. Part 6. Homework. 1. Suppose relative risk equals 1. Exactly. Determine the percent increased risk. 2. From a clinical trial, such as the example used in the present video, what could be a reasonably valid interpretation of a relative risk exactly equal to unity, that is, 1? 3. From a clinical trial such as the example used in the present video, what could be a reasonably valid interpretation of a relative risk significantly less than unity? 4. From a clinical trial such as the example used in the present video, what could be a reasonably valid interpretation of a relative risk significantly greater than unity? 5. From a clinical trial, such as the example used in the present video, what could be a reasonably valid interpretation of a relative risk significantly different than unity? 6. Determine the expected frequencies from the hypothetical clinical trial data of the present video using the methodology that your professor taught you when he or she taught Pearson's chi-square test of independence. 7. Calculate relative risk using these expected frequencies. 8. Explain why you think you got the relative risk that you got. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. Also, if you would like a particular video on a topic 
of your interest, please feel free to post a comment with your request.